Hey everyone, it's Dave here and today we're doing virtual desktop. I feel like I'm pretty much the last person to this party, simply because I was always the user of Oculus Link. My mentality always was that the cable is gonna be always far superior to the kind of other means of kind of transmission the games to Quest anyways. But recently it just pushed me to at least try it out and see kind of what is it about. I always knew what it's about, it's just that I was always pushed back by the idea that I'm gonna have an extra layer of latency kind of in games but it kind of started a few days ago basically for me that I'm starting to have so many link issues that I'm just gonna be I'm I'm like done I'm officially done with fucking link and just oculus in general because they they just don't care y'all that have been following me for a while know that my kind of link games playthroughs and whatever I kind of was recording through that always had some issues either if it was like just disconnecting randomly from the PC and the games screen flickering recordings just crashing it's crazy to think that recording process on quest standalone by itself is a struggle but like then link kind of tops it off for some reason. It's essentially exactly what happened with my kind of walking that playthrough. I stopped kind of playing it on Link because I just w couldn't be bothered with the process at all. And now I'm kind of like starting to play again on Quest because I don't need to fucking have cables and anything, just issues in general. So I went with the mindset that virtual desktop is gonna solve kinda... I hoped everything and it it kinda did. <laughs> it's like it solved majority of things I had problem with Link cable-wise and now I can just normally just play games. Just enjoy it and continue doing my things. It's essentially that uh, I've always been seeing people like, you know, praising virtual desktop on Reddit and just pretty much everywhere from YouTubers and stuff. But it seems like uh, now I am the person that joins that circle. <laughs> so then it means that it is actually legit software. <laughs> We're gonna do just classically the gameplay and just like, you know, uh, just actual footage of what was happening when I was texting out. Basically, it, you can't really start using it immediately. You have to kinda do some actions in different places, not only buy this on the quest store. You have to install through side quest kinda the patch that allows you to play VR games normally, like you would just be on the link normally and uh, installing like a streamer kind of application from their site but if you're a person that already kind of used SideQuest before it's gonna be just simple basically buying the application in the quest store installing the patch from SideQuest and installing the application from the virtual desktop kind of website that's pretty much it that you have to do kind of before just doing anything else the actual application is uh, fairly easy to use it's very clear to figure around with settings with bit rates and just like with everything kind of that impacts the gameplay if it's just you know latency graphics quality fps's pretty much everything is clear and just like on the silver plate here for you it's a thing that you have to kind of try it out yourself everyone has different pc everyone has kind of different graphics cards processor pretty much everything is like custom so you have to fiddle around and see for yourself what works kind of with you for me it was just a matter of uh, searching for the right latency kind of spectrum that I can handle but for every game it's gonna be different because every game like requires different performance so the latency is automatically different so it's essentially kind of customizing your experience to the game that you want to play not every game I've heard works for virtual desktop because it's kind of like optimization individually there is a very uh, good uh, kind of spreadsheet on their discord that I've discovered it it basically lists every kind of game that you can play in VR and see if there's like a compatibility, what's wrong, if it works perfectly or not. So that's a good guideline if you can even play normally the game that you wanna play. I definitely from this moment onward, if Oculus won't gather them shit together, I'm just using virtual desktop because it eliminates every kind of issue that I had with recordings and for me that's what I care about. <laughs> 
and the experience is pretty much the same. Like if I would be uh, connected by the cable and virtual desktop, the experience is not very different. It's pretty much the same thing. But at the same time, I have kind of things that uh, help me with that. I have a five gigahertz kind of router here, Wi-Fi. My PC is pretty much high end. So like I have no reason to not use it. So like after one year and a half, I finally kind of got to try this out. And this is actually the thing that is gonna stay. <laughs> Like this is kinda game changing for how I wanna kinda play around with Link games. So here's the process of my kinda learning thing <laughs> with this application. It was a while, it's just that it's not an immediate experience. You have to just kinda try out things and then it's gonna be worth for a while at the end. Here's my struggle. Okay, let's go. Okay, so... Streamer app. <laughs> God damn it. I thought I installed everything. Give me a minute. Oh. Something's happening. Hmm. Okay. Mm I think we're in. So, <laughs> what now? Uh, okay, so what can we do? Oh. Okay, I'm automatically in my... PC, lovely. Oh yeah, this environment is way better. Uh, so, what can we do? Like, okay, so that's pretty much my PC. It seems like it. I yeah, I have this virtual uh, desktop stream stream no <laughs> streamer that you have to install it. I will do everything like in the video to kind of clarify what's going on. Yeah, okay, so it seems like. With the menu button, you can bring up the actual kind of menu that you are in VR. Now we are like in the kind of PC space. I love that there's also like kind of tutorials where to launch games, video bitrate. I have like everything ready because I have like five G five gigahertz kind of internet. I have everything ready for a proper virtual desktop experience. It's just that I was always hesitant to do it. What do you have more? Okay, settings. High quality, crisp battery. I don't care. High <laughs> frame rate. I think it's already still locked from 90 FPS because Oculus is butthurt. <laughs> but that's what it is. Microphone pass through. I don't know what that means. Maybe yeah, you can play uh, with your microphone. Okay, okay, okay. Got it. Got it. Nice. Boost clock rates increases battery usage only used when recording video or casting. Well, that's what I do, <laughs> anyways. Desktop bitrate. Higher bitrate for increased quality when streaming the desktop, but it uh, Give me max! Are you, I don't give a fuck. Max bitrate. I'm on Oculus Quest 2, like, this headset can handle things. Okay, I think that's gonna be it for the settings then. So, what do we have here? Streaming. VR frame requires restart of game. 90. <laughs> Even it's locked. Ah, oh, okay. So desktop bitrate is like what's going on here, like quality-wise, right? What do what happens if I turn it down? It doesn't really change for something. Okay, streaming max. Wait, higher bitrate will increase mid quality on uh, streaming VR games, but will increase latency. Oh yeah, that's what I was kind of like um, uh, worried that will happen. So I I will see what's gonna be like kind of the standard because I. I play various games, not only like kinda latency heavy, but I don't know. What was the default? I think this, I don't know. There's, there's advanced options like slight encoding that reduces latency but might not work with all GPUs. I mean, I have 2080 Ti, so I think it's gonna work. Extra latency mode reduces stutters but increases overall latency. No, I don't, I don't think it's gonna be fine. Stutters, I don't think it, they're gonna happen in my situation because I have so kind of high tech so let's leave it for now let's just go with the games that I have okay so it uh, seems like automatically looks for the oculus rift games and steam games okay so let me see oculus games then I think we should do until you fall to be fair because this is kind of the game that I'm familiar with and I know how latency is gonna gonna be here so Oh shit, what's happening? <laughs> there's no screen, there's like nothing happening, I don't know why. Maybe let's do first steps, I don't know. Oh wait, now I have! Wait... What's... okay. Weird. Okay, so... I 
It's time to learn about your Oculus Touch control. I don't need to. <laughs> now, try pressing all of the glowing buttons with your Thank thumbs. Thank you. So, there are kind of some stuttering. It's not very noticeable for like people who are just like, you know, sporadically play VR, but I can kind of tell that there are some stutterings. There it's not huge by any means. It's gonna be only noticeable in the games like, you know, Beat Saber, those kind of like those dy dynamic things. I'm pretty sure you can like turn it like off in this kind of extra latency mode, like reduces stutters. But does that mean that it's gonna be like huge? Mm, not really. Like, no stuttering for so far, but like the latency is not that noticeable at all. Even though I think I would even be able to play Beat Saber. Let's jump there then. Or le maybe let's increase this beat rate. Uh, it's a bit slow with latency. Like the quality is fine, but it's still not that big of a deal. I thought it's gonna be way worse that people like kinda, you know, assumed. Maybe they're a little bit over exaggerating. I would go for max quality. Having my setup, like with the internet, Wi-Fi and my PC, like I would go all the way with the beat rate to be fair. You can as well play it like in desktop, it's pretty much you move your head, play it like that on your like kinda PC, but you, you steer it like being in VR. I don't think it's gonna be like, you know, appropriate for like what I want to play, maybe, or maybe the games that I can't play for my channel because they are not in VR, but in virtual desktop they are in VR. <laughs> maybe I will dodge like, I don't know, somehow the system. <laughs> How to quit the game though, here? No. <laughs> oh, here. Yeah, okay, so it stops like automatically. Got it. <laughs> it's interesting that the max bitrate went up for some reason, like the limit, because it was like 111 or something. Maybe it's like dynamically changing automatically. I have no idea. But I will keep everything at uh, max because I can. So let's do Beat Saber. Oh shit, there's no Beat Saber. Wait, <laughs> Beat Saber is not cross by? That fucking sucks. Okay. Okay, so then until you fall. Damn. <laughs> mm, it doesn't really work. I've maybe it's because I've heard there's a thing that some games do are not really like optimized for virtual desktop. So it basically means that not every game is gonna work. That's from what I've heard kinda from Reddit and stuff. So then Asgaroth. Jesus. <laughs> mm, this one doesn't seem to work as well. Maybe I'm failing at something. But it's weird that the uh, first steps work, so... Hello? Yeah, some rant doesn't work as well. I'm so confused. <laughs> Let's do Alex then. I'm trying at... <laughs> like, trying everything at this point. Mm, I think something's wrong with my setup. I don't know why. Because nothing's working besides first steps. Oh... Because uh, Virtual Desktop does not support 90 FPS yet. I mean, because... There are some shady things going on. You have to switch to 72 and then it seems like the game uh, work. Okay, well, fuck my life. <laughs> oh, Asgaroth, I did not play this game like a while. Okay, so what's about like kind of the stuttering? So yeah, when I move, it kind of, yeah, it kind of is kind of shaky. Oh. See, here's the latency. Okay, now we can test it out. Oh yeah, the latency is definitely higher in this high performance games. So now, let's kind of switch it up. So let's reduce my bitrate to... Let's see the, what's the worst quality wise. 32, for example. Oh damn, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I can definitely see the notice. <laughs> it's so like blurry. It didn't change anything like kinda stuttering wise. Latency is still the same though. Huh. Slice encoding. Maybe let's turn off the advanced options. Hmm, seems fine. The latency is definitely w lower. Definitely. It's still noticeable. I'm not sure if I would like, you know, kinda prefer this to link. I would definitely play games that does not require like latency at all or like kind of very fast movement because link by itself has so many fucking problems that I'm so annoyed with that I think I would just switch to virtual desktop to have a quality time. <laughs> Let's keep it at 
100. 100 seems like a nice number. Also, let's reduce FPSs. Because maybe FPSs uh, have something to do with that as well. Hmm, so no, the latency is still the same, so it seems like FPSs do not change f shit. So let's do the ultimate test and let's play until, f until you fall. I feel like I have kind of like my ultimate kind of settings that I want to use. And uh, until you fall is gonna be a good game to t try it out, so. This bullshit with s like. Why it's. See? It the same thing that I had Link. The screen flickers. Fuck this. Oh, and it works now normally? Something's up really with the software. It's very confusing to me. Mm, on this save file I don't think I have like good things. Yeah, my save file here is trash. Okay, so I'll just take my kind of setup. What about the latency? Oh, the laten latency here is perfect. Yeah, it seems like the games that have like very high graphics, it performs kind of worse, but then those games kind of tend to not really rely on latency, so... Let's see. <laughs> Damn, comparing now to playing like uh, uh, the Quest version, <laughs> it's like kind of... <laughs> Funny to see the graphics now. Okay. So so far I don't really have problems with latency. And we know in this game it is like very mandatory. Holy shit the graphics bitch, <laughs> I'm not used to that. But like because I can play the link games now on kind of virtual desktop. That's very appeal appealing now to me. Let's see. Jesus, the loading times instant. Thank you, my PC. Okay. Yeah, uh, it is actually lovely. Now I'm kind of like slowly changing my mind. <laughs> Let's see the latency versus the night. What, what is this difficulty? Oh, relentless, okay, lovely. So we'll see. If latency can handle night, then it, I'm fine with it. Okay. Shit. <laughs> I missed it. Perfect! I love this actually now. After kinda fiddling with the setup, like settings, if you kinda can work it out somehow, just you know. Test few games a bit, then how the latency kind of works with you. It might be actually a way better experience if you have a PC. But if I could play Relentless on Virtual Desktop, I can do pretty much anything I feel like. Love this. Let's uh, leave that for... not 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 this. Let's leave the game for now. So here are my ultimate settings. Pretty much high graphics quality. 70 FPS rate, bitrate, 100 megabytes. It is the thing that you will kind of most of the time kind of fiddle around. Depends on the game, I think, because in Beat Saber you would pretty much ha want to have lo low kind of bitrate to have minimal latency. Games, for example, like Asgoraf, depends on kind of like your setting graphics wise on the PC. You would kind of have to fiddle around either like kind of medium, high, depends. Everything seems to have like here CPU utilization, GPU utilization, everything is kind of like kind of clear to know what's happening. I did slice encoding simply because it says might not work with all GPUs, but like I know it's gonna work with NVIDIA, so that's for sure. The rest I'm not feeling around now. 
especially this extra latency mode, I don't think the stutters are even happening for me. So that's pretty much uh, what it is. Settings, these ones are just purely for the kind of desktop things. I only have boost clock rate simply because I usually record when I play anyway, so it says it should be on. <laughs> definitely had to kind of fiddle around. It's definitely not instant experience. You have to fiddle around with the settings, see what's working with you, with your uh, kind of PC. I don't have now an issues with a fucking link that there was this fucking screen flickering, disconnects from the cable. Pure bullshit because of the Oculus kind of incomplete patterns. I'm not like ca uh, calling in there out, it's just that even the support can't help uh, in my case because they're not testing for people who play and record at the same time. Usually, of course, the software is actually perfect when you just play. When you play, it's all fine. When you kind of add an extra layer of recording, now shit is just, it's, it's pure shitstorm. It's pretty much it. But yeah, I think from this moment onward, I would use only virtual desktop, I think, for the PC games. Simply because I figure out the system with the settings and the latency does not bother me at all. So this is gonna be, I think, from moving onward, the thing. So I'm joining the <laughs> the group of uh, virtual desktop uh, wannabes <laughs> because this was like happening a long time. I, it took me basically one year and a half to kinda get used to this app and then start using it because I was like a non-believer that it's gonna actually be better. But from my kind of standpoint that I had various issues with Link, Virtual Desktop is a flawless application for my case. So love that decision that I made. <laughs>